Hey everyone, it's Kelly Robinson with Pana Nose. Uh, we are talking about stage three of my nine stages of the talent acquisition life cycle. Uh, we talked about three potential times to look at a resume. And um, the first time is before you're even gonna make a phone call um, to a potential candidate. We discussed that last week. Um, this week we're gonna be talking about the second and the third time. So the second time is before a phone interview. Uh, it's the time when you're gonna prepare for the phone interview. And the third is on the, th the phone interview, uh, when you're actually interviewing a candidate. Um, so the second and third time kind of go hand in hand. You've got to prep, and then when you get on the phone, you have to make sure that you've been able to really do a, a really thorough and deep dive of um, the resume. So if you uh, do get the person on the phone, your very first reach out, make sure you're asking to get a resume for a follow-up. It's really important um, that you have that so you can piece together um, the whole career flow, um, the career progression, um, and really understand. LinkedIn profiles uh, don't have all of the complete information as you know, um, you know, take a look at mine. You'll see that I don't have job descriptions and um, I'm just kind of talking about um, the title, the position, and the dates. And many times um, people don't even put on their LinkedIn profile every single position. Um, they only put the last, let's say, 10, 10 years or 15 years or something like that. But a resume really should be complete so you can really understand their history. Um, whether a client wants to see a resume or not is a different question, but I do feel as a recruiter, it's really important to make sure that you understand your candidate and make sure it's a good match. So go through the resume before the phone call. Make sure that you look for any gaps. Um, make sure that you are looking and reading the job description um, to see how it matches. Um, what maybe doesn't match the position that you're looking for so you can make sure to ask the appropriate questions to either qualify or disqualify the candidate. When you get them on the phone, make sure that you follow through in your questions, fill in any gaps, go through their whole um, career progression. Um, make sure you understand uh, for at least the last, I'm gonna say the last 10 years of positions, why they took a position, how they got it, uh, what they did, and why they left. So it's really important to understand um, their motives for all of these things because it'll help you to understand if you're gonna make the right match. So for example, if someone tells you they left their last two jobs because the commute was too long, uh, you wanna know what that commute was like and make sure that you're not gonna put them again in the same position. Um, so it's really important that we're not squeezing in people. Um, we're focused only on quality and we're trying to screen out if we can because we wanna make sure that we're making the best possible match for our clients and hiring managers and for the candidates. It has to be a really strong match. Um, it's really important to your um, reputation as a recruiter. You wanna make good matches so that um, the um, candidate or becomes an employee and is then um, retained by the employer. That's your, your client, your hiring manager, um, and they'll either keep you on board as a recruiter or continue to use your recruiting services. So it's really important to prep right and then make sure that you really do a complete deep dive into the resume to make sure that it's positioned um, correctly so that you really understand your candidate and make sure they have the right motives. Um, to be able to present to your client or hiring manager. Thanks for listening.